Hello everyone, and welcome to the show. Tonight, we'll be chatting with Ned Zellick. How are you doing, Ned? Excuse me? Who are you calling Ned? Do I know you? Are you my mate? Because I don't remember seeing you next to me on the SBS panel of football analysts. Refer to me as Mr. Ned Zellick and show some respect, you root prick. Sorry, Mr. Ned Zellick. How are you doing? For me, quite shit actually. I come onto this program and you don't introduce me as a former Socceroo who was voted by his peers in the greatest ever Australian footballer's first 11. Please welcome the man who scored two wonder goals against the Netherlands in 1992, Mr. Ned Zellick. Nah, just Ned Zellick. Where's the imagination and fantasy in your introduction? Do you even know who I am? Yes, you're a former Socceroo who... Yeah, I just told you that. What about before the interview? who has played all over Europe, who won the Bundesliga in 1995 and helped his team reach the UEFA Cup final. Continue. <sighs> Let's move on to your beginnings. Even though you're a proud Croatian, for some reason you moved to Greek club Sydney Olympic in your early years. Why did you do that? Well, at the time, I was going through a phase. You could say I wanted to get to know men better, if you know what I mean. So I thought, hey, there's a Greek club down the road, so I'll have fun there. But I got over it pretty quickly. How so? There's an old saying called, be careful what you wish for. I don't know if you've heard of it. Basically, I realised I wasn't curious anymore. I did get my first professional club goal there though. At first I thought it was my individual brilliance, but during the celebrations, the boys were grabbing my ass too many times. I felt like the strikers also let me have that goal when they should have went for it themselves. It didn't help that they gave me the look after I scored the goal, as if I owed them something in return. It was as if their eyes were saying, hey, we opened up a hole for you to penetrate, now it's your turn to do it for us. I wanted to smash him, eh? But then I would have ended up in prison, which wouldn't have changed a thing. Indeed. During that time, you scored those two goals against the Netherlands during Olympic qualifying. How important of a highlight was that during your career? For me, it was extremely important. It proved to the world that I was a prolific goal-scoring defender. The second goal showed my individual brilliance. Everyone talks about the impossible goal by Roberto Carlos. But did you know that the angle for my goal was 7 degrees more difficult? It was the impossible goal before the term existed. Also, if you analyse my goals, internationally, I had the strike rate of 9%. But if you look at Imo Heskey, he had a strike rate of 11%. That's only a 2% difference. And I was a defender. I could have been as good as Messi, but I'm actually quite humble and I'm not selfish at all. I care about other people and put others ahead of myself. It's not good to have a big head, you know, and think you're above the team. Hmm, how about that? After those goals, you went to play in Germany and had great success. Did the German people fall in love with you? Of course they did. Who wouldn't? I mean, I told you earlier that Greek men wanted my anus. At least this time, the love was platonic. Unless you didn't like Borussia Dortmund. When I played, there were a few sour krauts, if you know what I mean. And who can blame them? You love it when your team scores goals, but with Mr. Ned Zellick being the rock that he is, no amount of individual brilliance can break through. Let's talk about- I'm not finished yet! Fuck your root, huh? If you look on the Wikipedias, you'll see that Dortmund entered a golden age starting in 1992 and continued through the 90s. Who came there in 1992? Mr. Nedzelik. Also, when I played for the Socceroos, they were called the Golden Generation. I don't think that's a mere coincidence. Mm, yeah, sure. The EPL is quite popular. Why didn't you stay there very long? Because I had a falling out with the manager. He asked me to hack people down and claimed that it was the British way. I told him I could defend with class, imagination and fantasy, but he was having none of that. I talked to other people around the country and realised that it was universally accepted that the British style of defending was to break people's legs. I told them, sorry, I'm not Kevin Musket. And they said, who? A year later, I found out that Kevin Musket was now in England. Go figure. It's been a while since you played now, and it seems you've settled down and raised a family. Is your son interested in playing one day and following in his father's footsteps? 
If he does show interest, I'll have to change his name to Zelik Zelik. Because I figured, if he has two Zeliks in his name, he'll be twice as good. What about having his middle name be Zelik and call him Zelik Zelik Zelik? Well, then he might be as good as me. There's a chance he won't. It's hard to reach perfection, you know. Only like 3,000 people have climbed Mount Everest out of 7 billion. That is only 1 in 2 million people who have the individual brilliance to rise above mediocrity. He has my genes, so he definitely has the ingredients for football success. What if he doesn't succeed? Then it's clearly his mother's fault. How? Well, since you don't do research, I'll explain something called genetics. You're half your mother and half your father, you see. So if he fails, it can't possibly be my fault. I won the Bundesliga. Clearly, his mother's genes would have an effect on his ability to play football. You should know this. It's common knowledge. <sighs> anyway, are you enjoying moving on to a new career at SBS? I've always been on SBS, so it's not a big change. Now they get to see my intellect and understand why I did such a great job in transition. It allows people to see the total package of Ned Zellick, the man behind the individual brilliance. I could have coached, but then my insight would only reach my players and would benefit me directly. Since I am not selfish enough to coach, like Frank Farina, dickhead, I wanted to share my knowledge with the world, and what better way to do it than on SBS with other knowledgeable experts like Craig Foster. Well, it looks like we've run out of time. Thank you for appearing on the show. Thank you for appearing on the show who? <sighs> Thank you for appearing on the show, Mr. Ned Zellick. You're missing something. <sighs> Thanks for your time, Mr. Ned Zellick, the former soccer roo who was voted by his peers in the greatest ever Australian footballer's first 11 and who scored two wonder goals against the Netherlands in 1992. Third time's a charm. You're welcome. <laughs>